Thanks for your company. The details now. Hundreds of residents of Dome Farsi in the Gasout municipality have deserted their homes after armed soldiers stormed the community as a group of unidentified men and community leaders allegedly brutalized two uniformed military men over a long-standing land dispute. The few women and children left behind tell Joe News all men in the Dome Farsi community have fled to surrounding villages following the incident. Roland Walker, who is in the community, reports the military personnel who would not speak to Joe News could still be seen searching homes, perhaps still looking for sus suspected culprits for the brutality meted out to their kind. Already some suspects are reported to have been rounded up in the early hours of today. Just a little over 24 hours ago, when it was reported that at least two personnel of the Ghana Armed Forces were brutalized by residents over some mis uh, misunderstanding uh, about an occupation of land and its ownership. Following a press conference that was also convened, we're told by about uh, 30 communities and their various uh, traditional leaders uh, to protest what they claim is an occupation of uh, some uh, acres of land they claimed were theirs. Now, the tango over who has uh, a claim to the land is at the dispute of this. But the concern has been about why, uh, over time, consistently, we had at least two military personnel brutalized by the citizens or the inhabitants of some of these communities. And this is what has been done. Just um, uh, hours later, we're talking after a day, we've had um, the military and the, pol uh, the police making their presence felt here. They've made sure uh, that they've been deployed to various areas to at least bring the perpetrators to book. But we're also being told that it is their presence that has been able to bring some sanity into the town. Now, for many residents, the concern had been that the incidents had resulted in many of them uh, taking flights, not uh, in their homes. You can find that many of these homes are very empty. Just behind me, you can find uh, that the army also have made that deployment of their uh, accoutrement uh, in many respects. Now, this deployment, even though officially the personnel who have been deployed here have not spoken to me, uh, has been occasioned by the incident that happened. And this deployment is expected to ensure that we have uh, some peace so far uh, that has been restored here. We will uh, try as much as possible uh, get someone to speak to because none of um, the resident or two that we've been able to see in sight are willing to speak to us. Indeed, we're told that uh, hundreds of them who, who are in the uh, Dom Farsi community uh, have fled either into the Uh, somebody who says he only has a property around here and was coming to just visit to have an oversight as to uh, what really may have transpired uh, just 24 hours ago. Obekechi, uh, Mepacho, if I was saying. Good reason. Now, Mepacho, Mr. Mensa, Ebanisena, what has he, what he has? Oh, Mintia, me wo Accra, Malam. But we thought as I was going to be a high, you go see AC. But on a management, you can crack a crack a crack a mayor, and the end, many many be building contract to be now. Many bus also about her senior identity. No, ma, and they are about her. The Otain Semna C. A Hano, a Nasa, a Nintina Oba, a Nasa, a Wankasa, a year routine steps, a year water, the Baha. Mean chief read that. This year by a boon, I see your cars were an air car. You must send me a Bahana. But boy, be an offer, my sons, and not eighteen baby. No, my mom, oh, Jina Hode, maybe has a beer, mehuna, and Sana, or Miss interview. Okay, so Mr. Gibral Mensa is saying that he uh, he lives in Malam, uh, that's right, right, right in a crowd several kilometers away, but uh, he came here because he has a, a property here, uh, a co owned property he has here. Usually, routinely, he will just come here to to ascertain the progress of work and he has somebody who usually will supervise his work and was trying as much as possible to see whether he can see him and when he came he saw the presence of the military uh, once in a while we'll see uh, the patrol 
uh, pickup or vehicle of the police also passing through. Uh, but on a such as a went to me in Missa said, Yen, they see. This year, you would hear me see an end of Merbana. This year. Uh, yo, uh, yeah, yeah, that's Mr. Gabriel Mensa. Yo, Mr. So that's Mr. Gabriel Mensa. What we'll try to do is try as much as possible speak to a number of um, residents who, will, if they're willing to speak to us, um, uh, we will uh, um, interact with them. Ah, at the same, na say, Osha, in some cases, see, na, dear, na we meet me and catch a referral saying, to, to, eh, so, oh, come, mente into the P bracket, cra. Um, what are you saying? What are you saying? Evelyn Mensa. Evelyn Mensa. Uh -huh. So um, she's called Evelyn Mensa. Um, I didn't see. I didn't know. But me, I catch them. Me, I'm a CCA. I, I didn't hear any enraged report yet. CCA. So yeah, by yeah, who knows? So you have to be good, Hano. Da, I'm a chawo. I have no me wo. Na me kwa me fiha ko duadi. Me ma me yali wo ho. Inti a ho na ma ko me kwa kofia no. Tini esi ane dano kwa mi ni ho. Me baki tuwe bi na mi jano ana me ko ye. Inti me ti asamu no duwe deno. Ano pe ya na me swa me no ama na me simba be yushia me baki tuwe. Afi kwa na ma be bi me danya. Me di ohu me dan me ye. Inti ni a ko asusi ane dani na ano mi ni ha. Ndi na onso ba ye na obete ye. Me ba me beti se. Yase asoja fwa ba ha. Amanto kwe bi esi. Inti ni ame ti ya na no no. Na mse enu inti na ma ahaye minya minya sana no mse ay. Inti ni adi se de si poti di. Ma mhm. Unche de ni. Pacho ay. Okay. You are sister Evelyn. Thank you. Pacho you. So we're speaking to. Uh, so basically, that woman my colleague spoke to was saying that she wasn't in the community when the incident occurred. She had gone to visit her mom in a nearby community only to hear the soldiers had stormed the town. She said she left her little uh, child and when she came back, she was told that uh, there was some confrontation between soldiers and um, community members resulting in uh, the, the wounding of the, the police, uh, the, I beg your pardon, the soldiers and two civilians. We are trying to reach uh, my colleague Roland Walker for an update, especially on how those who are injured are faring and also to speak to the MCE as well. We keep working the lines and we'll bring you an update on this incident. Let's do some other stories now. The National Identification Authority has re-emphasized that though the birth certificates can be used to acquire the Ghana card, that document in itself is inadequate to pass as proof of one's nationality. Speaking on the Super Morning Show with Winston Amon, Joy 99.7 FM, the Executive Secretary of the Authority, Professor Kenatefa, intimated the controversy surrounding the use of the birth certificate to secure the National Identification Card has been settled by the Supreme Court and must be complied with without any reservation. This comes at the back of the ongoing mop of exercise underway in various parts of the country. What you need to get registered is a passport or a birth certificate or in the absence of these two documents to be vouched for. Now, let me quickly add that by the Supreme Court decision on the oh. birth uh, certificate issue, the birth certificate is not an identity document. And that distinction is clear. A national health insurance card, a voter ID card, a Ghana card. These are identity documents because they are documents that you, in partnership, you, the holder of that document, in partnership with the state, create using your biometrics and your alphanumeric data, that is your, your biographic data, mm. name, date of birth, those kinds of things. Now, the birth certificate as a document does not identify you. It is information provided about you and recorded, yes, by agents of the state in relation to you. It does not bear your photograph. It does not bear your fingerprints. It does not identify you. It tells the story of the circumstances of your birth, your parentage, your na nationality even, and your, the location of your birth as claimed 
by persons who compiled that data on you. Hmm. Now, for us as National Identification Authority, our law says we should use the birth certificate. But we have the Supreme Court decision that is binding on us. Okay. Now, when people go to the registration center, because our law also requires us to capture every state-issued ID card and document, you go with your birth certificate as, if you went with the birth certificate as your primary document. We will still interrogate. Our staff are trained to investigate, to make the necessary inquiries, to be satisfied that the person standing before them is a Ghanaian. Where they, are sat where they are not so satisfied, they do not register you. Let me give you a case. Okay. I was in Aflao about two weeks ago. A gentleman and his son were there. The man says his parents died when he was 10. He was born in Kumasi and he has since relocated to Aflao. The person who vouched for him to get his Ghana card as a father, the person is not related to him, but when he got it, he claimed a relationship. But when I asked him the question, he doesn't even know the name of the person. Mm. Now, his son, who had presented himself for registration because he's over 15, but under 17, I mean, he was about 16 year old, years old. No problem with his that. But he was holding a birth certificate. The date of birth on it, completely different from the health insurance card, which bore his photograph, and which, as a 2D barcode card, also had his basic biometrics uh, in, in, on the card. His photograph is on the health insurance card, but his date of birth on the health insurance card is different from the birth certificate that he was holding. The father could not um, vouch for any of the claims contained on the birth certificate. This boy was an infant when the birth certificate was created. So it is a dilemma. I am, I am comfortable with the decision of the Supreme Court. I don't see the mm. controversy, I mean, the, the, the issue there. But for us, when you go to our registration center, we interview, we interrogate, okay. and be satisfied so, that you are. If you are not, and you, uh, you insist you are a Ghanaian, we will have someone, we will have you have someone or some persons come and vouch for you as a Ghanaian. Thank you for staying here on Join News today with me, Benis Abubedulansa. Now, the Committee of Foreigners in Retail Trade and the Trade Ministry is inspecting GIPC documentation of foreigners trading in the Swami Magazine artisanal hub. Shops of traders who have not complied with the GIPC Act are being locked up. The committee says it had earlier, eight months ago, given the traders time to comply with the directives of the Investment Pact. Prince Apia has been speaking to a member of the committee, Nana Kwabna Pepra, and joins me on the phone with more. Hello, Prince. Uh, so far, how many shops have been locked up? Yeah, are banners. Um, as at early this morning, um, 41 shops, according to the uh, Nigerian traders, have been um, locked up. And um, this morning, when uh, we managed to join the uh, committee, when it started today's um, uh, exercise, two shops, um, as at the time we were with them, uh, were locked in our presence. Mm. And I should say that the exercise has started uh, started yesterday and it will continue till Friday, according to the uh, committee uh, from the Ministry of Trade. Mm. Prince, the, the Accra scenario was quite confrontational. How did uh, the, the, the Kumasi uh, scenario play out? Yeah, um, it's very much calm. Um, nothing confrontational about it. Um, the team, the committee enters um, the shop. They ask of the document, documents they, they want to see. If they don't have it, then they ask you a uh, pit plate to come out. Then they ask you to um, lock your shop and they ask you to go home. So after that, they paste um, a document on the um, gate or on the door of the uh, shop and that indicates that after they are, they are able to um, comply with this directive, um, the shop will be open for them. And, and that is what has been happening so far. And how have these uh, the traders who you say are Nigerians, right? Predominantly Nigerians, the foreign retail traders. How have they been yeah. reacting to this? Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, uh, their reaction have been uh, pretty much very um, sad about and uh, worried about the whole incident. What they are saying is that um, some of them even have all the documentation by their shops 
have been locked down. That is what they say. Mm. And another thing they are also saying is that it has been very difficult now for them to renew their um, um, residence permits as a result of um, the um, processes that the, um, the committee is doing. And that is one of their challenges. Mm. They are saying that if that will continue, it means their business cannot continue and they are going to find it difficult to stay in this country. So their government should come and evacuate them if that is possible. Then. Finally, Prince, uh, has the committee been reacting to the claims of some of these traders that they have all the documentation required, but their, their shops are still being closed? Can you come again, Bernice? I'm asking if the committee has been reacting to the claims by some of the traders that they have all the documents required, but their shops are still being closed. Yeah, um, for the committee, that is not possible. All that they are um, looking out for is the GIPC um, documents. If you have the documents and you are complying by that, they will definitely not close the shop. So they have denied that particular um, allegation by the um, Nigerian traders. Thank you very much. Prince Opia is with Lava Firm in Kumasi, our sister station, and he's been bringing us some updates on what's been happening in Swami Magazine, which is a spare parts hub in Kumasi. You may remember uh, that a couple of weeks ago, a similar situation uh, played out here in Accra, where some Nigerian shops, own shops were closed uh, for failing to meet requirement of the GIPC Act. Now, the local government and rural development minister, Hajia Alima Mahama, has scored herself 90% for work done at that ministry in the last four years in relation to the MPP's manifesto. At touting various achievements under her leadership, uh, Madam Mahama cited the successful digitization of business operating systems to enable MMDA's local business as a key initiative which improve on the work of the various assemblies uh, in terms of location and revenue mobilization. She spoke at a media press series a while ago. Consequently, MMDs have increased allowances for assembly members in accordance with Article 2502 of the Constitution. Article 2520 says assembly can pay allowances to themselves only from their own internal emitted funds. That's what assembly says, the rest of the constitution says. So the, what we have done is to focus on increasing the internal generation capacity of the assembly members. And they have done that and have improved the payment of allowances to the assembly members. Strengthening the of traditional authorities within the local governance system. We have enhanced consultations and collaborations with traditional authorities. In fact, in the recent training of assembly members, we also emphasize on this. And for me, we have direct for example, we, we, when we were passing the Bedford registration, we took it to the National House of Chiefs to get their input. When we were working on the referendum, we took it to National House of Chiefs to get their input. At the local level, the district key executives know that uh, our traditional authorities are key actors in local governance, and they have to consult them and interact with them. So enhance consultation and collaboration in that regard. Upgrade the Tamale campus of ILDS. The infrastructural needs assessment have been conducted for the Tamale ILGS, got done architectural drawings that has been completed, and budget allocated under the DAC for the well to commence. In fact, we started the procurement process in regard. And we also did a lot to support, we, we were on the infrastructure at the national office here to enhance their activities. Decentralizing and equipping land valuation board to, to provide direct technical support to property valuation. In collaboration with GIZ, the first phase is being implemented and land valuation boards has been resourced to do valuation of 49 properties. The target with GIZ is 83. And this version will be accompanied by data collection on ownership of the properties and for us to also identify rentable properties. The last one was implement 3% increase in DSF displacement to persons with disability. 
The receiver for some defunct financial institutions will begin payment of final round of locked up funds. Details of that and more coming up shortly in Business with Daryl Kwao. Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwa, a receiver for some defunct financial institutions who soon commence payment of locked up funds of depositors. Bank of Ghana has moved to provide cover for about uh, 1.7 billion CD government bonds to these, for these payments. Dr. Ernest Addison is governor of the central bank. We had the reform in two phases. The first phase had to do with the banking system where we revoked the licenses of nine banks. All depositors were made whole. There was a 100% coverage of every depositor in the banks. It's the depositors in the SDIs. They got their money. And they got their money. They had 100%. They had access to their money. Access. Everybody got access to their money mm -hmm. regarding the banks, the nine banks that were, had their license revoked. Now, the second phase has to do with the SDIs. These are the savings and loans microfinance institutions and finance houses. And in their, in their case, depositors, individual depositors who have been fully paid, the data that we have suggests that more than 95% of depositors have been fully paid. So they are just about 5% of depositors who have large amounts. These are the high net worth individuals that were settled with bonds which were to be retired over five years. So we think that most of it has been done. There were a few delays regarding depositors of GN Bank and First Allied. And in the last three weeks, that has also been clear. The, bank, the government has provided a bond uh, worth 1.7 billion. See this, which we have monetized 700 million of. So the, Receiver is also working at clearing the, the last few people that are left in that segment. So I think we've made a lot of progress, Mr. President, in dealing with this depositor issue. Now, uh, village savings and loan schemes are helping cocoa farmers reduce challenges they face in accessing credit facilities, especially in remote areas with no formal banks. In a country with just 4.5 million bank accounts, the majority of people in Ghana do not have access to formal financial services. In the following report, joining us is Justice Bay defines out how farmers are using the age-old practice to bridge the gap. These are the cocoa farmers of Ashriwem, a small community in the Ashanti region, at their weekly savings and loans meeting. Village savings and loan schemes like this one are common in many communities across Ghana. Villages like Ashriwem have no banks and so it is schemes like these that brings financial services to their doorstep. More importantly, this involves farmers who are into cocoa production, a major lifeblood of not just the national economy, but that of this village. As we query, I'm a Abbe Doy, I'm a young who said, Yea, to do a higher idea. See, I'm a first one, near Che, Ubian and a son any day. The challenge with financing, which the farmers of Ashley Wim face, is a problem that many cocoa farmers face too. This is the multiplier effect of cocoa farmers having more money in their hands the ability to invest in alternative livelihoods. With money from the VSLA group, these women from Ashriwem started this honey business. Yeah, the box you see was six months to be a near queen. A beton. Say it to me, box back okay in your bed, three million. Our box back could be a box on us here nine. And yeah, you're a juma. For cool no and my crana. I wanted to meet boy. I say, business car, Ashram Colano, school fees, nay, books, to Tommy Nano, a boy, a pa. With the money that these farmers are having, they are now able to expand their cocoa farms and improve their productivity. We've been able to reach over three and a half thousand uh, smallholder farmers with about seven million CDs um, in credits. 
so they can invest in their farms and also in additional livelihoods. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Ashidwem. And we've got a full bulletin of business news coming up at the top of the hour. Sports is up next.